Oh wow, wow. Oh, okay, I'm a little scared now. All right, I'm Craig and this is Diary of an Angry Scottish Golfer. Hang on, there's some pals. Uh, lads, lads, lads. Ah, oh, they're away. Oh well. Today I'm out at Kingsfield Golf Range in Linlithgow to have a short game lesson. Um, I've been working on my short game quite a lot with the guy out here, David Patrick. He's a golf coach who specialises in killer like chip and pitching. Well, that's just short game. Just listen. How grey is my beard? Anyway, so I've been doing a bit of work with him over the winter. I feel like the whole point of this channel is just like try to concentrate on getting better and. I definitely could get better with a short game, so I've been working with him. It has gotten quite a bit better, so I just thought I would put the camera down and just leave it running, record the lesson, let you see what a lesson's like. A lot of people maybe don't consider getting lessons on short game, maybe just think about long game and stuff, but the thing I think the way he puts it is the quickest way to save shots is to turn a five into a four, like a, a bogey into a par. Um, we were going to do bunker play, but it looks like it's going to start raining, so it may just be pitching in the bay. How cool are those goats? That's really cool. That's the best wildlife we've had on this so far. Anyway, grey beard, out. So what do you want to do today? And if you take a look at the, take a look at the fuller pitching action, I mean, because I think I'm getting a bit better with it, and then maybe look at some more delicate ones, um, because I still get a little bit nervy with them. I film them just a playing round every shot, and I noticed that I, I chunked two pitches in a row, like badly. I was worried it was going to happen, and I was nervous about them before. I was So when I do that, all that, it's weird, like the body, it, I, I fix the body, 
because like on those ones I'm trying to position the club. Yeah. But with the low driving one, all I, the only thing I need to think about is starting it right because I just know the feeling of yeah. like and that's such a nicer. But also even from that position, you're just pivoting better. Anyway, try to, the only issue, the only reason I don't do that every single time. But it's a bit too low for yes. So it's absolutely fine to play that shot lows in the winter with the wind or back pins. It's more about okay, what's my neutral? And then if I want to play the loads lower, I still want to be. I worry about, about playing that one because, like they say nowadays, like they say, um, pitching you should be, you should have vertical shaft for pitching, like yep. anything like that. It's just death. It's like the old school. You, you're off by an inch and you're chunking. Well, you're you're not because of what pull the ball back and strengthen the grip. Okay. Why is that not going to chunk it? That's the one thing that I think is a really good, really good tip. So why would that not? Because you're hinging it better. I just think if you move it back, if you move the club shaft forwards, yep. and you're exposing more, I feel like you're you're exposing the leading edge more. And if you're sure. off more, you're gonna. I I always find that I'll, I'm I'm more scared like that. So if I move it, the back in stance with stronger grip. Okay. So a I've got to try wrist hinge. Let's not um, just move it back and just bend the jam it the ground. But also, if I pivot properly, two things happen. Well, with the way you're doing it there, it looks like you're you're hitting it almost with a straight shaft. Like it looks almost like you're, even though you're doing that, your action looks like at impact. It's so the action hasn't isn't isn't any different. Yeah, if we had the shaft, it's the same. Because I'm pivoting properly, I'm not changing the shaft. So that's whatever I've set up. A set up. That's where I want to hit impact. If I set up, it doesn't matter what you set up. It's when you change the shaft that's the real problem. Oh, okay. Now so also, yeah, you if I pivot properly, if I've got to fall back, if I pivot properly, what's happening? Why am I not digging the cup? Nice and even to start with. 
pinch of two, lean with the hips and the knees, and then you've got to make sure this hip rotates behind itself. So think about it. I can move a little bit laterally with the driver, and then load. Yeah, there's not time. Exactly. So that's one of the reasons why this which shot is the hardest one. There's a few. Finding any pair. Um, what did you say at the start? Like the little yeah. de delicate ones I find so quite tricky. So if I go this way, I'm trying to hit it there, there's already too much power. So then I, how do I get yeah. back to it? Yeah, that's why I do find it. So if, if you go on that tiny shot, you know, I'm, I'm trying to preset stuff. If I go this way at all, I'm, I'm just screwed. But I've got to almost be going left already. So then if I try to hit it just like a couple of yards. Yeah, I don't make you feel better. But you, I couldn't do that if I went this way to start. Yeah. That makes you feel better. Well, just think about A, I've moved my centre of gravity back. Yeah. B, then to get back, I've created power. And I've probably created a chaff. That's exactly how it feels like. They, you know how they say, like, oh, if you're like, position one, position two, or whatever. I feel like my minimum, like the, the least I can go back, is too much for some shots, for like, for like that. So but people that. have their own natural Just length of swing, and yeah. that's fine. See, I feel like my minimum is there. Like, that's as, low, that's as short as I can Okay, do. so, if I'm going to hit the ball short distance, what do I have to do to help? I uh, see. I, uh, my only thing would be just less power, less shorter swing. Just being set up as small as possible. So if I'm standing here, and I've got face open, really narrow, really close to the ball. Well, I'm I'm going to shot. If, if I'm if I'm going to hit it. Well, I could hit it already. But it's, it's, yeah, so it's so make the sense as small as possible, and suddenly you can actually make it small. Now if you wanted to make the smallest shot possible, which part of your body would you use? Uh, probably just my hands. Nearly. Wrists? Yeah, so think, just think about the hammer. Hammering a nail on the wall. A little bit of wrist. Yeah, that's it. Smallest motion. Yeah, most precise. If I want to hit this harder, what am I going to add? Arms. Arms. So I need to sledgehammer the whole wall then, what do I do? Two arms. Back. I'm going to open it with all arm the wrist. So if I wanted to hit as small as chip possible, and make the setup as small as possible, yeah. you're just going to use your wrist. Just use your wrist. But if you've shifted off the ball to start, you're in trouble. Yeah, that is why. So for, for really sort of delicate ones, I guess we'll get on to that. But, yeah, but it's the same principle because this... That has to go regardless. Can't do it. Okay, you're yeah, it just system. makes it feel right. worse in the shorter shot. But that doesn't mean then, that doesn't mean that for shorter pitches that there's no rotation. Exactly. Because my, my, I would go to, if I didn't question that, that my would be just keep still and just hit. If that right foot's that way, it's harder to rotate. It's like that. So I shouldn't be, it's not keep everything still and just get that. Because then, yeah, you get stuck. So there's two reasons. One, it's hard to see exactly. As I repeat, the tailbone is actually going towards the target. Okay? Yeah. So that A shifts a little point forward so we get the strike. But also that's really good for rhythm. If you're too static, you don't have any rhythm. Yeah. So it's like if you watch the best players short game, there's always some sort of movement. Yeah. It's not yeah. Um, that movement is Myself, my short game was fine and it's not bad, but it's, it's definitely got better since we started working together. And but I do notice that like the, the harder the shot, the more I will tense up. If I was if I was in a tournament and so, so with my short game, I didn't find the shot difficult, but the more the scenario of the shot. Yeah, so you could pull off other shots yeah, under yeah. whatever. So then it's like, well, actually, I need to get this up and down to make the cut, or if it was to win the tournament. And yeah. There's pressure from that. The actual shot in isolation wouldn't stress me. Yeah. So then, one of the things I never did 
well in certain fools, for example, I've always struggled to pivot well. So, if you look at Tiger, one of the things he's really good at, under pressure, just slows everything down. One of the things I did was, it sounds like exactly what your friend does, is if I've got a really pressure shot, I'm going to have a slower practice swing with more rotation. Because when I shuffle over, if I get a bit quick and tense, yeah. I really train my body to go a bit slower and move, so I hope that I'll get it'll go at least some. But if I'm just going there, going, right, don't duff it. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's my one. Just don't duff it. Don't make an action of this in front of people. Then the brain's got nothing to do. Yeah. So you've, you've got to give the brain something to do. Just get that left hip a little bit higher. Right. And then just feel that right pocket being pulled behind you. We're not going right to let win, but really perfectionist. Anyone else would say that would be shot, but you could hear that jump. Yeah, no, chunky. I just didn't hit it perfectly. <laughs> I get the great bit. But remember, the better the catcher, the better the weather. The better the technique, the bigger. Yeah, you've got a bigger. So you can actually hit good shots from like miles behind. So if you just stand there, I'll just I mean it's not as good off the map. So even if I go for like a you know, lob shot, I try and I'm gonna try and hit the ground like three inches behind it. And you get away with it. It's not great, but that's miles behind. Yeah, that would work. And actually, if I wasn't on a mat, it's actually easier. So even off a mat, you can practice hitting a couple inches behind it, and you actually get. Yeah. That doesn't sound right, but the shots doesn't matter how it sounds. Yeah. Well it does in terms of what you want to. I'm not gonna try and deliberately hit it two yeah. inches behind it. The point is I can hit the exact correct shot in terms of flight shape of shots. Yeah yeah. With a poor so called poor strike. If I ever could have gone this way and then I come back into it. That's, yeah, that's exactly what my but if you're here you've got to get back something. Yeah. So that's where it, that's where it comes from. Yeah, probably. I never noticed that, but that makes sense as to why I'm um, yeah, so just a spin. So there's a couple of things you can do. So one is we can kind of throw the right foot back, so we've forced it to be quieter. The other one you can do is obviously kind of do it. Think about it, if you're on an up slope. I can't move. That's so weird. 
do more with the left hip. Yeah. So, or even feel the shoulder going, the left shoulder going more up and around. Here, 
mind goes. But that's also why I speak very well psychologist. <laughs> because my mind goes to the worst possible outcome. It is night and day though from like our first session. Yeah. But most of the short game stuff that people struggle with is normally poor concepts. Yeah, I would I would say that. Like the, when we first our first lesson, like and you said about pulling that back, the right foot back, that was massive because I'm like all I've ever heard is open, open, open. And as a result it's making me spin and I'm going like this. And when you start changing the it's like a, I just thought you either had a good short game or you didn't. But do not make anything that can't be learned. Yeah. Skills are built. See that's it. I just thought oh, guys that guy's just got a good short game, that's just no, he's you, just lucky. What, what you do have is you've got a natural tendency to like whether you enjoy practicing it, you've got facilities at your course. Yeah. Um, and the Harrington story is quite good. But basically, how come you got a really good short game? Well, there was a bunch of good juniors at the club, a few of them were older than me. And <coughs> you'd part and ship for money. So, two options. One, you're good and you keep your money. <laughs> two, you're not good, you lose your money, and the older players don't want to hang around with you. Yeah, so you have to get good. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Pressure practice. Yeah, so pre like pressure practice is definitely a thing. Like I know that now playing these games that I play, and that's again like why I do a lot of stuff like these games and things. I put them on camera because people like at the club now like come up to me and they know what I've scored or they know like it's it puts a, a little added thing. It gives you more of an incentive to do more. What's your, what's your personal bet um, ever? No, in, in the game, and that's the point. Is that so? You, every time you go. Even if it's rubbish weather, you've still got a chance to do your best ever performance. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. I and mean, then even if they're a horrible start to the game, well, how do I get a half decent score? So that's light balls. Yeah. When you've had a bad front line. Yeah. Or oh, I'm on fire today, how to hang on? Yeah. So the again, nerves. The there's, nerves. there's a skill. So yeah. if you play the same game constantly and you know this pitch shots to beat your best. It's not the same nerves as we can um, on the golf course, but it's as close as we can really yeah, get. Yeah, it is close. It definitely is close. I feel like if I'm moving my hip better, inadvertently shallows it. I don't need to think about pulling the right arm in. So think about it. If this rotates better, I'm going to be better through here, which is going to be shallower. If this doesn't rotate, it's, it's that way. So let's see if you can get them to land on this line. So sometimes that one two yard shot is the hardest of them all. Yeah. <laughs> First time. So that's that's the that was okay space. as well. That was like a nice little bit of, it is a lot easier to square up a little bit. A little bit closer up my face. Hmm. So suddenly that's predictable. So okay this is our official. But you can see they both pitched about there. Yeah. Both gone about, about there. Double the distance of. So then it's really easy. So if you land this longer, just a little bit longer, it's going to go a predictable amount yeah. longer back. Right, last one. Let's see. That's why I, I that's why I was getting better results 
by feeling like I'm hitting drugs. So it was artificially. Not artificially, but you were in the right concept, and that's the point. Technique, to work with technique is fine and important, but the task drives technique as well. Yeah. So working on the low draw is going to be the most pivot. Yeah. But, you know, if somebody was driving the shaft too much in the short game, you'd work on them trying to hit high draws. Yeah. Because if you'd want to shallow the shaft out as well, that makes sense. You just always just be the right one shot you've got, because that's going to have a big influence. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I realise that's probably a bit of a longer video than I've done before. But um, David is a really knowledgeable short game coach. He's played in the block like Luke Donald and stuff. He's I always just badger him questions. I just thought that it'd be quite an interesting video. In my ever, ever challenging questing ever. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See you next week.